uh, like Sharon said, there was a lot of stuff added in Student Manager uh, last few months. Uh, so I'm going to try to get through these as quickly as possible. Some of these were fairly minor changes, like the first uh, one is just kind of a wording change on the ACE Web Info links, um, basically adding at the end the uh, internal test. Uh, verbiage and then the bottom uh, link is the four students. Um, that way you know which ones for what purpose. That way your your uh, the preview ACE web basically it has where you can see the course without it even being published yet. So you probably don't want to give that to students. You know for if they're coming in. You know, after you've quit publishing it for whatever reason, you know, like it's full and you're going ahead and shutting down registration, or you know, it, you haven't quite hit the, the published property yet on it, um, so you don't don't want to give that to students. Um, so anyway, the verbiage is now clear for for sharing those links. Um, new function that was added, and this is with our uh, gift card module. Um, and it's a, an add gift function to be able to show, oh, you know, be able to show things like, um, um, oh, the, 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 who signed up or, you know, who, who the gift was for, um, you know, things like that. So the different fields in the, the gift card table. Uh, be able to show that on uh, receipts or wherever you're needing to uh, to show that information. So uh, a little bit handy tool. I mean, we do have that report area for gift cards, but uh, you know, other areas you may want to add uh, other information about it. So uh, location, the the actual loc locat field, which has the you know, if you've got the split location. So it has the building and room into two different uh, drop downs on the course screen, but you know this is going off of the uh, location screen. Um, it's now looking for illegal characters. Uh, these are things that do not work on ACE web, things like uh, comma, semicolon, colon, things like that. Um, we're now going, if you put one of those in and when you, I think it's just just leave the field, it tells you, hey, you've put in this character, it's not allowed, and then it just removes that character for you out of there. Uh, so if you do wanna use something else, um, uh, like for instance, maybe using an underscore, uh, which is a legal character, spaces are certainly legal. So um, things like that uh, to help you out. Uh, enrollment. So what what we're kind of looking at, and and we're not sure. This is kind of a theory anyway, and but we think we've seen a case where this has definitely happened. So uh, one person has a course screen open, but Ace Web is getting registrations for that course. Um, if I remember right, this was an Ollie course, so they actually took several registrations. And then the person, um, you know, on the course screen saved whatever change, and that caused the uh, enrollment count and the waitlist count on the course to revert. It had, it had actually filled up while the person was sitting on the screen and was actually starting to take weight, um, start taking things in the waitlist. Well, um, because the numbers were overwritten, AceWeb then thought, oh, there's spaces again. So it started putting more people back into the enrollment. So um, it could be extremely rare that this ever happens, but what I've done is put a audit when you save the course to actually look at the registrations and the waitlist count and update those numbers if they are out of sync. So again, fairly minor, um, but yeah, that's definitely important. Uh, the F1 screen, which shows the uh, the keyboard shortcut 
uh, Alt-Z for the speed registration entry uh, that's been added to that list for you. Uh, membership expires on the course screen. It had gotten off with all the different um, additions to the fees on the, the, the screen and, and widening fields and whatnot. So that's now been realigned. So again, another minor change, but uh, definitely should help. Uh, quick reports. So this is another instance where we found that the OK and cancel weren't in sync with other screens. So OK is now on the left, cancel is on the right. So that should line up with everywhere else in the program and well in Microsoft in general recommendations of OK and cancel is always having OK on the left and cancel on the right. So uh, registrations with fees and payments, uh, the PY gift um, field has been added to that cursor. Um, that should help with uh, like if you're sending a mass um, uh, receipt or something from that area, you should be able to do that now. Well, and then other reporting. Uh, receipt areas in general added the code gift EXPD field and the code gift EXPN, again, for that gift card stuff. Uh, also, RG bill, I don't know, this that's like way overlooked. Why hasn't that been in receipts forever and ever? RG bill is the uh, fill, field that you check mark uh, designating the, the registration as a billing only uh, registration and not an active one. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, definitely something you would like to know if that's in there or if you have one in there. Um, course imports, a couple of things with course imports. First one is if you don't have the COCRSE field when you're going through the fields in the import process, it's gonna let you know, hey, this is a required field, you need this. Uh, so then it kind of, it bails out without trying to do the import because um, yeah, the courses aren't gonna exist uh, without that, uh, that particular field. Also, if you've got that COCRSE uh, field on there, but you have some values that are blank, it's now got, um, um, well, blank or it, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, blank. Make sure that uh, uh, it, you don't have any of those in the import routine and it won't try to add those because then it, yeah, it's gonna, cause some uh, duplication of things uh, down the road with, with multiple items having blank course codes. So yeah, that's no good either. So, boo, I think, yeah. All right, uh, payment screen, this is another minor change. Uh, before people were, well, we had a complaint about uh, the tabs, they were gray on gray like the exact same gray. So it was hard to tell where the actual tabs were. Uh, now I've made it to where there's a sub subtle difference between the two grays. Um, that way you can see, hey, these are where the tabs are. And uh, uh, I think I also increased the border around them too. So it uh, show, shows that uh, uh, tab border a little bit better. So. Uh, yeah, should help you visualize that a little bit better. Uh, import routines in general, Excel is no longer required. We've uh, I've been playing with a tool to uh, to make this work. Uh, this is especially going to help those of you that run Student Manager off of a server. Um, that way, your IT don't have to install Excel on the server uh, for you guys to run an import routine. Also the memo fields with, you could do, you know, NMCOM and as long as you had less than 255 characters, the import process would work. However, once you went over that 255 characters, it was blowing up. So um, 
previously we had put it into the course import because you definitely have, you know, especially if you're bringing in your catalog descriptions um, uh, or the, you know, the print on receipt uh, information, uh, those fields definitely we needed to have those. Um, so we had written that into the routine to be able to handle more than 255 characters. Now we've made it so that all those work. However, we're getting, as of today, a few hours ago, in fact, the there are some very obscure things happening, like certain servers just aren't playing nice. And I've tracked this down to an actual, it's a Windows issue of having a zip, you know, the with an Excel, the new Excel SX format is basically a zip. So I'm unzipping that, but there's a folder structure inside there. When there's a folder structure inside there, Windows just is like, eh, don't care. But only with certain servers. Don't know why it's just some, because I mean, we were testing this, like, you know, hammering on this pretty hard. So uh, this is just now starting to hurt a couple of customers. So I'm going to be rewriting this routine to hopefully avoid using that uh, that zip um, technology. If anything, we can um, uh, should be able to play with like WinRAR or something like that. But anyway, I'm I'm going a completely different direction. So if you do run into issues with the new import, let your tech know. I'm going to be working this afternoon and probably get around to testing it um, pretty hard tomorrow. Um, and we should then hopefully have something working again with the imports if you do run into issues. We were, I mean, 95% of the time we weren't having issues here in the cabin. It was only with Amazon AppStream which nobody is on yet uh, that we were having troubles with. So we thought, okay, it's good enough to release. However, now we're finding other of you guys having problems. So we're working on it. Follow-up emails. So it has in the past been at the end of the routine, it asks if you want to clear the flag or no, it didn't ask. It would just automatically clear the flag from the courses. Um, that uh, um, that you've been sending this follow-up, whatever follow-up email you're doing. However, now we're having it ask you if you want to clear the flag, just in case you want to do multiple follow-up emails. Maybe you're wanting to uh, send a follow-up email to certain courses, you know, in a week after, and then another one two weeks after, um, to make sure you select and deselect the ones you're you are wanting to send that uh, multiple time and just say no to clearing the flag and, and vice versa, um, selecting the ones that you only want to have the flag cleared from. So you might have to you know, do some more steps with your email reminders, but, um, or email follow-ups, sorry, this is follow-ups, uh, but you can, uh, you've got more options. Proxies, so this is, um, in ACE Web, when you, uh, when a student or a company is emailing, or not emailing, that emailing on the brain, uh, when they're proxy registering another uh, student, and they're like, oh, this person no longer works here, and they remove it from their list of people to proxy, that was getting put into name comments. Um, let me just pull up a name record real quick. Um, so it's coming, or not comments, name interest codes. So it's all going up in here. What I've done is put a separate area just for these removed proxies. That way, if they have made a mistake, you can still remove them from that list. And that way they can start uh, reproxying that person again. But, um, but yeah, that should help. Um, with those um, going forward. Uh, HTML editor, the font list, I think before we only had like five or maybe eight 
fonts in there. Um, now there are much more web friendly uh, fonts out there. So I've updated the list to include most of those. I tried to hit the list like um, uh, mobile friendly fonts. If there were like, you know, if a font was definitely web friendly, but not mobile friendly, I kept it off the list. If it was maybe web friendly and Android friendly, I would go ahead and put it in there or web friendly and Apple friendly, I'd go ahead and put it in there, but just kind of keep in mind that not all the fonts are gonna show up properly on all devices. Um, but for the most part, I, I think the list I've got, and I think I put around 20 in there now. So uh, there should be more choices. Uh, just kind of keep in mind though, they may not all play nice on web devices. So definitely do your testing uh, with these, especially if you're doing this as a catalog uh, description, um, putting some different font in there and look at it, make sure it's it's uh, going how you think it should go. So uh, send quick email to class. Um, this has been, oh, people have been asking for this for a little while, uh, but yeah, now I've added to where you can use the HTML editor with that. So, including the new fonts. So, uh, one more area to use that with. Uh, this should make some people fan, uh, some people happy. The course title, which was previously 95 characters, I believe, as uh, a maximum, we've bumped that up to 125 characters. So, if you got it, want to get really long-winded with your course title. Uh, you can, well, you can't get really, really long winded, but you can get a little bit uh, longer. Um, I made the comment we should have put in the the program a long time ago, a course title and a course subtitle, but, eh, uh, you know, wishes, if wishes were airplanes, you know, type thing. Uh, Social security number uh, references in the program. Uh, trying to get away from that because we don't want you to use the the NMID field for social security number. Uh, so I've I've removed it. I, like there was a couple hundred places in the program that it had to be removed from. Uh, you may still see it in like error messages and and you know something like that, uh, especially when when dealing with the INSSN field. Uh, so the instructor. SSN, um, which I've labeled on the screen as the FEIN uh, instead, uh, but um, but yeah, we've not, we're not renaming that field behind behind the scenes. Um, so if it does throw up an error message or something, you're, you'll still see something like that. But anyway, so such the obscure type things. Um, other references on screen and in other messages uh, should be changed. It's not going to change on reports though, so that's that would be up to you to change. Uh, registration name searches. So before it was showing everybody in the system. Now we've gotten it to where it only shows active. So this would be speed registration entry. Uh, going from the course and adding an individual from the course screen uh, where you're doing a name search, uh, it's going to go, um, it's it's only going to show active names. So anybody that's been deactivated is, is no longer going to show. Uh, delete query. So I'm just going to bring this up. Uh, so this is going to be under tools, data cleanup, wait, no, tools, reports, delete queries. It's kind of just like the delete additional report where it shows you the query title, um, which, which areas is this being at? Um, this is the first bunch of entries here, are the set filter, uh, and then the mass purge routines. Um, 
shows you when it was last ran, a run count, who the last user who ran it was. That way you could kind of see, hey, there's a whole bunch of queries here that have not been used. Um, you can make the decision to go ahead and remove them. Uh, definitely want to keep you know, things that have been recently ran. The, and I'm running this from a demo, so there's you know a lot of queries in here that haven't been ran in you know since the demo was put together. So uh, that's kind of the reason for a lot of these and why there's a run count so low. Well, and you know we added the last ran what five six years ago or whatever. So um, some of these were ran before that in the demo. So uh, long time. So if it is missing the date, it's been a long time since it's been ran. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, just go through, check mark which ones you want deleted, hit done, and they be gone. Uh, another thing with queries, were, uh, the search queries by que uh, keyword has, uh, we've added the name if it's been used of the query. So that's also in reports, um, search queries for field. So what's the, oh, use the one that's on the screen, name, name, three. So, so it's gonna show you any time that it's available to be put into a query uh, what area that it's going to put. If it's actually used in a query, it's going to put in the name of the query or queries if there's, uh, and I've put a pipe in between if there's multiple queries using uh, the field. Uh, so this, there's transcripts. Uh, there's two queries in transcripts that have enum name three in there. Um, there's, Couple, couple of these is in LN unknown and LR unknown. I'm not sure what they are, so I'm leaving them alone for the moment, but at some point um, might be doing something to get rid of those because I don't, I'm not sure we're even using that anywhere in the system. They might've been samples or something that didn't get killed correctly. So anyway, um, just kind of keep that in mind if you run across that. Uh, that's kind of why I ran this example because uh, I knew if those two were sitting in there. Um, so queries, document cleanup tool. So this is removing from student manager any references to documents that no longer exist on the computer. And it's looking through the name link file, the name docs area, uh, instructor resume, uh, reference document on the instructor, uh, the catalog graphic, the APIC, uh, core, let's see, course reference document, the course receipt attachments. For receipt attachments, if there's multiple documents in there, it looks through each one and only removes the one uh, area. So let me, let me show that real quick. This one's the one out of data cleanup. So go to document cleanup, and it's gonna go through each area one by one. It's not gonna just give you all of them all at once. I thought about having it do that, but eh, that was too much. So, uh, so this is going through the name additional documents. So this is uh, name docs. Uh, it's showing these two documents uh, no longer exist on the computer. Um, so if you do want them cleaned out, just hit done. If there is, oh, this doc, this document got moved to a different location, I need to move it back. Uncheck it, and that way you can, it still stays there, just make sure you remove it back so the next time it doesn't report it. So uh, I'm gonna hit done, and then it goes to the next area. This is the catalog graphic. Um, yeah, and again, this is demo data, so it, that's kind of why, this is an old document. Um, so yeah, that's, that, should be removed, but hey, I want to keep these for uh, some examples later on down the road. So um, deselect them all if you want to keep them. 
workshop import. This has been asked for for a long time. And I was like, well, how does that look? And nobody could provide an example until Logan University came along and they were like, here's what we've got going on. Here's what we're thinking. And it's like, that works. I can get that to work. So really it's going to add to the import routine from the speed registration entry, the ability to import like in the workshop code. Um, um, you can also import in, uh, the workshop grade, uh, some other things that go into the workshop individual table. Uh, you can do those. As a caveat though, those workshop codes need to already be on the course in order for it to link properly with the what's being imported. Um, you can add, I guess you could do the import and then go back and add those codes and then it will link up. But if you want it to link up right, right from the get go, um, have those codes in place already on the course. Um, encoding the subject for emails. So this is like um, receipts. Um, yeah, this is only for receipts. Uh, uh, the enrollment for, and then put in the pound pound encoding and definitely want to trim for course NM because with 125 characters, it's going to be way off the screen if they've got multiple. Um, so if they've got multiple, it does do enrollment for, and then it starts repeating whatever you've encoded. If you've got the course in M plus the uh, uh, COCRSE field uh, in here, it's going to repeat both of those uh, as two different compounds. Whatever you you want to show uh, in here, it just it looks for that first pound and says repeat anything after that if there are multiple uh, registrations on a confirmation. So, uh, oh, and that I should mention with that, that's not just on the, the um, subject, you know, on the um, email template itself. If you've got it to the universal, you know, in your email settings, use this subject for all registration confirmations that you can encode in, in that subject line as well. So either place, uh, depending on your preference on, on what you're using for the, the subject code. Um, definitely if you've got diff different receipt emails for you know, like different departments and stuff, um, going this route uh, so that it shows, you know, maybe you want something different for the subject code for those different templates, or maybe you just want to copy and paste them, the same thing on all of them, what, whatever you need, uh, that can get done. Run invoices preference. Um, before, if you unchecked print new, and then, you know, so you're running an old receipt number or something, um, then the next time you went into the screen, it uh, left the print new off. Well, then it's going back into the query system to print an old uh, uh, invoice again. And it's like, oh man, I was meant to have it do the print new. Um, so you can't, there is now a preference on, um, well, here, I'll just show it real quick. Uh, edit preferences, pay. Um, default run invoices to print new. So that way, every time you go in to run invoices, it's going to check mark print new, and you can um, then you have to uncheck it each time to if you're wanting to do an, an old one. But if you know 90% of the time or some significantly high percentage of the time you're doing print new, um, you probably want that setting set. So uh, also with invoices. Uh, what I've done is um, when you're saving an invoice, it now asks if you would like to assign an invoice number. This is especially important if you're doing the 
um, you know, having students pay outstanding invoices online, uh, the sooner you get them an invoice number, um, the, the sooner those are going to show up as on their uh, outstanding invoices so they can pay you. Um, so that, um, yeah, money sooner. Yay, that's always a good thing. Uh, also with this, oh, well, let me also talk, uh, talk payment plans real quick. Sign invoice number for payment plans is now a new preference, uh, same area as with this, right with the sign invoice number billing screen. Uh, used to be payment plans would go off of the billing um, preference. So if you had the billing preference turned on, it would also apply to payment plans. Except some people wanted to assign invoice number for payment plans, but not for regular billings. So now it's a separate preference. Um, by the way, if you've got the assigned invoice number for billing preference turned on, it's not gonna ask you. The assigned invoice number is just gonna do it. So um, anyway, so this is now a separate preference, but if you've already got the assigned number or assigned invoice number for billing preference set, then this new preference is going to, be, to mimic that. Um, so whatever you've got it set to, um, the new preference will go off of until you decide to change. Uh, print email invoice option. This is now you can print or email an invoice directly from the pay screen. You don't have to go run invoice. Actually, it does run invoices behind the scenes, but you don't have to go to the menu and run it for just this invoice number. So if you do the um, assign the invoice number, you could come right away, hit print or email if they want to email. Uh, you can do either one and get it to the student right away. Don't no no waiting. Lots of lots of things I've done with invoices here. Okay, so outstanding invoices. So this is this new option is going to come up after you close out of the search screen. I'm going to demo this here in a second, but uh, what it'll do is give you an option to email an invoice or yeah, email an invoice to anybody who's still in the list. So maybe you're processing payments for the last week or so, and then you're like, okay, whoever's left in the list, we need to email them. Maybe we'll get paid from them next week. And this is either by the the all outstanding invoices or the invo uh, outstanding invoices by whatever day payment range, both of those options this works with. If you've got the preference where it pops this area up on login, this also will still work. So let's see this. Abandon the module, invoices. I'm gonna do the outstanding invoices all. I don't think there's many in the demo. Yeah, there's only a couple. And if I remember right, one of these doesn't have an email address anyway. Um, so at this point, why is that so big? Uh, my search screen got big. All right. Make it smaller, but anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna hit escape here because I'm not doing anything with these invoices. They're both still outstanding. Uh, so it brings up this question of, do you want to, to email PDFs to anyone who remains? Yes, I'm trying to show that off. So then it's gonna ask what report you want to use for generating the PDF, basically. Uh, so this is going off of the invoice routine, running invoices. Uh, you can hit escape on this and it'll pull the default report. Uh, I'm gonna do email subject, speaking of which, do I have my um, paper cut up and ready running? Because you're not gonna be able to see the email if I don't have that running. And there it is, okay. Pull that aside for a second. Your invoice attached, you'll find, all right, done. 
if you want to blind carbon copy. Okay. And one, e one e emailed, one record had a missing a bad. If I say, okay, it's gonna show me who was missing. Uh, so maybe I wanna go back and print an invoice just for this one. Um, so yeah, make a note of that. Uh, so you can you can deal with that. But if I pull now, ah, where's my paper cut? Paper cut uh, right here. Oh, come on, why did you do that? Uh, so this is your invoice down here. This is the one I just sent for five. Um, which section, let's see, headers section. So there's the invoice and do I, no, can I? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so there's the invoice that it generated and emailed to Jenny Call, which by the way, Papercut is a um, fake email um, uh, server type thing. So, where, so that way I'm not sending this out into the real world, I'm sending it into my little sandbox here on my computer and not having to worry about uh, external influences. So it, yeah, this is gonna work with your guys' email stuff. Uh, back to the show, where's the show? Create attendance at the time of registration. I think that, well, from the title, pretty self-explanatory. I don't know why we haven't been doing that. But anyway, the, for now, we're just having this done in Student Manager. It is on the ACE Web to-do list for 074. Hopefully I will get that done um, for 074, which I've got three months. So I have a pretty good chance of that getting done. So um, make sure when you're canceling registrations though, that you check mark that uh, uh, remove attendance records if you are wanting to remove attendance records and that way, or in the refund wizard. Yeah, that way it cleans up that attendance table. But anyway, good help. Those of you guys who are tracking attendance, uh, not have to go in and create attendance on the course once we get it working in ASWEB. But uh, workshop location. So this I've put in uh, just like a course. Oh, come on, come back here. Um, so where's my workshop? Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see if I remember right down here at the bottom. Workshop. Okay. Uh, so if I go to the workshops, it now has this building room drop down. If you've got the campus um, uh, uh, option turned on, it will show campus building and then room drops down below. But um, uh, yeah, it uh, you can now pick building a room. One thing about it, if you're using the maximum on the location and then and that maximum is less than the maximum you've put on the workshop, it's gonna ask or it's going, does it prompt you or does it just automatically overwrite it? No, I can't remember. But anyway, helps you with that, um, uh, that feature as well. That way you're not uh, um, double entering. Um, also, this so the it had this location field that was like twenty characters or whatever. So I've put in this location minutia. What I'm thinking is, if you've got a conference center and it's you know not really room numbers, um, or you don't don't want to program in the room numbers into separate locations, um, you can use this minutia or something or you know, maybe there's some other detail you wanna put in there. But anyway, you got this extra 20 character field if you wanna use that or for older um, 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 if you wanna keep that old historical information, that's all there now too. Okay, so yes, I haven't made any changes. So um, back to the slideshow, what's next? Instructor follow-up. So this is like instructor reminders, except for the follow-up. So um, 
yeah, you can run this based on the end date of the course, not the begin date like reminders are set for. Um, that way you could be like, hey, your class ended last week. How did it go? You know, I don't know. Some sort of follow up. Anyway, there, what we've decided to do with this is do a follow up template for you guys. That way you can put that uh, template in place and, and um, um, use that to send these. And since we were at it, we're like, hey, let's do the same thing with reminders. So now there's a template for instructor reminders. Um, so you may wanna do something with that then before the next time you do uh, uh, reminders to your instructors. So also since we're building templates, actually this was several builds ago. So 119, the emergency email routines, we've built different templates for that. So that's emergency, um, so the regular emergency email, the building specific emergent, it, we're calling it emergent, emergent loc. Um, for instructors, emergency T, and then emergent lot, basically started to do loc, but ran out of characters, so lot. Uh, so four different templates based on, depending on what you're wanting to do. Uh, to those different or for those different situations. So uh, play with those and do those before you're sending out the email uh, to everybody. Combine names forever. If you have two names that are registered in the same course, it wouldn't let you combine. Now, what uh, student manager will do so if it finds two names registered in the same course, it'll move the money, any fee adjustments, other thing, workshops, things like that. It'll move that stuff over. It will not move the registration. So it's not gonna duplicate the registration. So everything will just get put onto one. Hopefully they've only paid for like one of the two. <laughs> If they manage to create two separate accounts and register in the two separate accounts, hopefully they've only paid for one. If they have paid for two, well then they've, they're gonna show an overpayment, which you're gonna need to deal with anyway. So that's, uh, yeah, that's for you to take care of and uh, hopefully get that straightened out. Um, questions? student manager wise. Ooh, let's see. Lynn just popped in a question and asked if it transfers registration notes. No, it's gonna keep which, whichever good twin, whichever one you've deemed the good twin is gonna keep the registration note from that one. Good question. <laughs> We've got some fun comments. There was some cheering, Matthew, about the HTML in the quick email. Um, somebody asked, can we also bold and stuff in there? You might want to show that uh, what that looks like so they can see all their options. Oh, it looks like the same mm -hmm. options you get when you're doing a course description. So, right. Yep. Um, so, quick reports here uh, send quick email to class, do all. Yep. Come on. And so then the HTML editor is right here. Start doing whatever you want to do. You've got the bold, the font, uh, bold, italic, whatever, all these different choices um, in here to, to do the different things with. So, yep. Much appreciated. Other questions? Folks, you've got some comments, Matthew, that they these are great updates. You've been really, really busy and lots of them. People are going to have to watch the review, review the re recording again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's a good, little, oh, no, lot of stuff that's good stuff. Good stuff. Now, Matthew, you we had mentioned at the start that you might be able to show the. Um, the I hadn't forgotten. New feature. OK, of course. Yep. 
I was just making sure we got all the student manager stuff. But it, it, if you still have questions about student manager stuff, pop those in. continue yep. to pop them in. Um, but I'm going to show this real quick. So I'm on enrollment cart here for a hybrid course. My seventh annual neurology uh, is, is a uh, hybrid course in the system. So I've got in-person fees and virtual fees. So what it's at, it first is wanting me to do is choose, do I want to attend in-person or virtual? Well, if I do virtual, then it shows me just the choices for the virtual attendance, the, the senior citizen virtual fee, the virtual the regular virtual attendance fee, and then I need to choose uh, one of those. If I want to do in person, it only shows me then the physical fees, those uh, in person, and you can, these labels are kind of arbitrary. Uh, you can, when you're putting this, or you're maybe with the help of your technician, putting this on your template, uh, you can, um, change the labels for these to, to what you need to. The fee list is definitely still generated from, um, you know, from whatever you've put into student manager, but uh, at least then it gives you um, hopefully a little bit more clarity, have the people choose in person or virtual first, and then choose the fee, um, you know, what, whatever you want to do for that, so. Helps eliminate a possible pretty long list of fees like, to read through. So. Right. Uh, yeah, I think somebody was saying, you know, they've got uh, like six different fees, but that's for physical and then like another five or six for virtual. So that's a pretty significant list that this will help drop it down to, to just showing the six at a time. So very good. Very good. Um, we have a question from Tyler, when students receive a confirmation email for this registration, are these two different templates that can be used, one for the in-person, one for the virtual, depending on what they've selected? The, um, I forget. Um, I think there's, it's the same template, but it's like there's a way to segregate the section to show different information. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure, yeah, because there's like a, 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 an if statement on the template to show the, the virtual, like virtual shows the URL, you know, like the Zoom link or, or whatever you're using to serve up the, the course. And then it's got like instruction, like you that online. Um, uh, let me just bring up that hybrid course. Uh, find seventh annual neurology. Um, this the online note. So if you got maybe some instructions or something in here, uh, you can put that um, into to the people that choose the virtual. Uh, email or virtual virtual fee so that their email has this information and not shown to the physical people. Very good. Um, Matthew, let's go back to the combined names feature again um, with okay. duplicate registration. Is this optional functionality? Does the system alert you if there's duplicate registration? They're trying to make sure they can cover, you know, catch anyone yeah. that might need a refund. Um, yeah, uh, uh, how does that work? Okay, so I've got, who are the evil twin? Oh, I've already combined my Lisa Avery's. Um, if Matthew. I remember right, <laughs> if I remember right, it's it when it it tells you hey, these two people have, if you're doing it from the name screen, these two people are in the same course. Um, this basically, it eventually asks, do you want to continue? I think it tells you a little bit more about what's gonna actually be combined from the tools, data cleanup, combine names, automatically combine names registered in the same courses. So this is an actual it it up front you can check mark 
or uncheck mark whether you want that to happen. So, yeah. Good question. Yep. Cheryl, I know you did a lot of testing, and I think I heard you jumping on with a comment. Did you want to add something to that? I was just going to say that um, if you're just combining the two single, it's going to move. If, if there's a payment associated with the one it's going to mark for deletion, it moves it over to the good registration. So if you did need to do a refund, you know, you've got that payment there that you can now go in and refund. Yes, excellent point. Great discussion, everyone. Any other questions? While you're thinking, hey, Matthew, while you're, oh, Lynn wants to know if it's going to be obvious. You know, like there's any notifications or anything, you know, how's she gonna find those? Oh, if this is checked, um, I don't think it's, it's, I think it's, I think you'd have to run like a, a, a you know, just do report, uh, just do have credits uh, to see who, who has credits. But um, so that won't be obvious when, but when you're doing it from the name screen itself, you know, doing the, the overwrite of the ID number, it is going to come up with a pop up message. Hey, these two individuals are registered in the same course. Do you want to continue? So, yeah, that's that's pretty in your face. 